Criminal State, A Closer Look at Israel's Role in Terrorism by Jeff Gates. Part 3. Foreseeable Futures. By manipulating the shared mindset, skilled game theory war planners can wage wars on multiple fronts with minimal resources. One proven strategy pose as an ally of a well-armed nation predisposed to deploy its military in response to a mass murder. In this case, the result destabilized Iraq while creating predictable crises that could be exploited to greater strategic advantage by expanding the conflict to Iran, another Israeli goal announced in A Clean Break, seven years before the invasion of Iraq. Today's mathematically model-able outcomes undermined U.S. national security by discrediting our leadership, degrading our financial conditions, and disabling our political will. In game theory terms, this devastation was perfectly predictable, within an acceptable range of probabilities. Pakistan is primed to emerge as the next battleground for game theory war planners, when India, an ally of Israel, became the nation honored by the Obama administration's first state dinner, that occasion gave reason for concern due to the dynamics already at work in the background. In the asymmetry that typifies modern warfare, those who are few in number have no alternative when pursuing an expansionist agenda but to wage their wars by way of deception. To maintain its perceived status as a perennial victim, Israeli aggression must proceed non-transparently. Its only option is to operate with duplicitous means, including leveraging the power of its insider influence to advance an agenda from the shadows. Thus, the strategic necessity that this extremist enclave befriend the U.S. with the intent to betray that friendship to advance its geopolitical goals. Thus, the strategic need to create a relationship of trust with a post-World War II superpower in order to defraud us. How else could colonial Zionists wage their wars except with our military? How else could Jewish nationalists induce our aggression absent the widely shared belief that Israel is not an aggressor but a victim? Winning Wars from the Inside Out Game theory war planners manipulate the shared mental environment by shaping the perceptions and impressions that become consensus opinions. With a combination of well-timed crises, fixed intelligence, and a complicit media, policymakers can be induced to support a predetermined agenda, not because lawmakers are evildoers, but because the public mindset has been preconditioned to respond to manipulated thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. Without the mass murder of 9-11, would America's credibility be in tatters and its creditworthiness in jeopardy? By steadily displacing facts with false beliefs, those duplicitous few within the few amplify the impact of their deceit. And by their steady focus on the mental environment, their game theory war planners can defeat an opponent with vastly superior resources. Today's intelligence wars are waged in plain sight and under the cover of shared beliefs. By manipulating consensus opinion, PSYOPs wars can be won from the inside out by inducing a targeted populace to freely choose the very forces that imperil their freedom. Thus, in the information age, the power wielded by those with outsized influence in media, popular culture, think tanks, academia and politics is disproportionate. In each of these critical domains, Zionist influence is pervasive, not only in the U.S., but also in other nations, induced to war on false pretenses. Germany offers a case study in manipulation of the public mindset in plain sight and under the banner of a free press. In 2003, Zionist media mogul Heim Saban acquired the second largest media conglomerate in Germany. Why? Saban investment banker Steve Ratner explained his client's motivation. Because Germany is important to Israel. Or, as Saban concedes, I have only one issue, and that issue is Israel. By 2005, Saban had succeeded in electing Angela Merkel as German Chancellor. 
she quickly became the European Union's most reliable and forceful advocate for Israel. By November 2009, she was prepared to sponsor, in Berlin, an unprecedented joint session of the German and Israeli governments. Following his political success in Germany, Saban acquired, in 2007, a controlling interest in Univision, a Latino-focused network serving the fastest-growing voting bloc in the U.S. Media manipulation serves as an essential force multiplier to wage intelligence wars from the periphery, or, as with Chaim Saban, in plain sight. At the operational core of such psyops are game theory war planners, skilled at personality profiling, and masterful at anticipating responses to stage provocations and then incorporating those responses into their arsenals. In the case of Iraq, our mathematically foreseeable response to 9-11 led, in practical effect, to Israel's deployment of our military to invade Iraq. For aggressors adept at PSYOPs warfare, facts are only an inconvenience to be overcome when waging war by way of deception. Thus, the key role played by consensus shapers featured in mainstream media outlets who focus not on informing the public, but on mental conditioning. For targeted populations dependent on facts and informed consent to protect their freedom and preserve the rule of law, such treachery poses the greatest possible threat. Yet, even now, many Americans believe that Israel is not an aggressor, but a victim, and even an ally, despite facts confirming a multi-decade pattern of expansionist nationalism and geopolitical deception. Adhering to an enemy. The U.S. is far less secure than before 9-11. Tel Aviv clearly intends to continue its serial provocations as evidenced by its ongoing expansion of settlements and its continuing blockade of Gaza. Israel has shown no willingness to negotiate in good faith. With few exceptions, Barack Obama has named as senior advisers either Zionists or those known to be strongly pro-Israel. The greatest threat to world peace is not Islam. The most fundamental threat that underlies all others is our special relationship with a skilled agent provocateur. Without U.S. support for an enclave of nuclear-armed religious extremists, the common source of this threat could long ago have been identified and steps taken to ensure its containment. In the same way that lengthy pre-staging was required to induce the U.S. to invade Iraq, a similar strategy is now underway to persuade the U.S. to invade Iran or support an attack by Israel. Pakistan is also now on the agenda of those marketing the clash narrative, with its vision of a perpetual war against militant Islam. Similar mental conditioning is again at work, including the high-profile branding of the requisite evildoer, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. From its outset, the Zionist enterprise sought supremacy in the Middle East. To date, its alliance with the U.S. has enabled the deployment of American military might in pursuit of goals set by Jewish nationalists more than a half-century before a Christian Zionist U.S. president was induced to extend nation-state recognition. Harry Truman made that fatal decision despite his fears that Israel would become what Zionist lobbyists assured him it would not become, and what it immediately became, a racist and theocratic state. Only one nation had the means, motive, opportunity and stable nation-state intelligence required to take the U.S. to war in the Middle East while making it appear that Islam, not Israel, is the problem. When a long-deceived American public, especially the U.S. military, grasps the common source of this devastating duplicity, the response will shift the geopolitical landscape. The facts suggest that sympathy for Israel is not among the probable reactions. If Barack Obama continues to cater to these extremists, this Nobel Peace Laureate can rightly be blamed when the next attack features the usual orgy of evidence pointing to a pre-staged evildoer. Should another mass murder occur, 
That incident may well be traceable to the U.S.-Israeli relationship and to the failure of our policymakers to protect America and world peace from this enemy within.